Hi, I'm Greg Robinson and this is MyPhotographyShow.com. I'm here right now to critique this image that was sent in by Jerry. Thanks Jerry for sending this image in. It's very intriguing, very interesting. I'm gonna... He, Jerry, you didn't give us any information about uh, your shutter speed, your ISO, or your, your um, aperture. We have no information about your settings and no description. We have nothing. That's great. <laughs> this is gonna be a shot in the dark here. Um, so, I'm going to critique this image in two different steps. First one is going to be composition and second one I'm still going to talk about your settings and your point of view where you shot from, okay? Uh, here we go. So, let's dive right into it. Compositionally, I really like this image, honestly. Um, you've used the rule of thirds. I can see that the main interest in the image is around here where we have this beautiful sunlight coming through those stores and casting this wonderful pattern and motif uh, all over this floor. On the other, or well, practically half of the image, we have practically no information. You know, there's nothing there. That's one thing that's bothering me about this image a bit. Now, what I would have suggested for that, to uh, better the image a bit on this, is when you were shooting, getting rid of all that. You know, the only part that interests us here is, well, roughly that. I'm, what I'm doing here is showing you by cropping the image where you should have, what you should have framed, okay? So bringing your camera slightly further down like that and shooting like this. I'm being extra careful to try and place this door in the top right third. As you can see, I've cut this image in two thirds, still to respect the rule of thirds, and this intersecting point should be around here. Uh, that makes the image a little more interesting. Let me see if I got that rule of thirds right. Uh, so I need a vertical of 33%, and no, not even actually. I need a vertical of 66%, sorry. 66%. That was spot on, and a horizontal of 33%. Let's see what that gives us. Bingo! So that's where you want the door. Okay, I got that right. Uh, maybe a little lower. So uh, we'd have to see what. Well, yeah, you have to try that out. The second thing I would have said is trying to create immediate foreground interest. Okay? Basically, what we're confronted with nowadays is everybody's used to what I call the. Uh, the traveling syndrome, it's not the traveling, what do I call it uh, usually? The tourist syndrome. <laughs> the tourist syndrome is basically when you are on location, you see a photo you want to take and you bring your camera to your face. Why not? That's the way you take photos, isn't it? Well, not really. That's the way tourists take photos. The way us professionals take photos, or let's say amateurs, those who are really interested and passionate about photography, we try and provide a new way of seeing things, a new point of view. For this image, what looks great is this kind of hay. It seems to be hay on the floor. Uh, why not get close to that hay? You know, bring your image further down, really close to the floor, and use that as your immediate foreground interest to guide the viewer into the rest of the frame, still keeping this notion of depth uh, with this lovely light flowing through and creating this lovely pattern on the floor. Now, I agree, if you get too low to the ground, you will lose this pattern on the floor because it'll kind of flatten, it'll take less importance in the image. Another interesting point of view would have been to get on a ladder or something, you know, get even higher. Basically, move away from this uh, this five foot five or six foot height from which we all take pictures. Give us something new. Give us an eight foot view. Give us a one foot view. Give us something else. What would a pigeon? How would a pigeon see this, for example? Or how? Well, I'm, so, I'm thinking about a pigeon. I'd say a bird. You know, any old bird uh, that's kind of perched on top. How would he see this scene? How would uh, a small field mouse see this scene? How would any animal other than a human being see this place? How would how would they give us something new to look at? That's what I'm trying to say, basically. Um, and that's why I wanted to talk about your settings as well. I don't know if you did this, but if you're going to use immediate foreground interest, you're going to want your foreground to be perfectly sharp, as well as your background, because you're guiding your viewer into the end, into the depth of the image, okay? So you need everything to be perfectly sharp. To do so, you need to close your aperture. A maximum, of, uh, most you can do, you know, f22 generally. If you can bring it to f22, that is great. Uh, f16 will do otherwise, and that will give you the most depth of field possible. Now, in doing so, obviously, you're going to lose a lot of light, and therefore, you're going to have to bring your shutter speed down. That's why I always bring my tripod personally. 
And by using a tripod, you can go down to shutter speeds of, well, even 30 seconds if you need it, even several hours, you know, it doesn't matter. Um, I don't think you'd need that in this kind of shot though, but uh, that was all I had to say about your settings and your composition. Thanks very much, Jerry, for your image. I hope you others learned something through this uh, little critique. Please don't hesitate to send your images into myphotographyshow.com. Follow us on Facebook and on Twitter. I hope to see your images soon. I'm just waiting to critique them. I love doing this. I hope you learn stuff and I hope you better your photography thanks to my critiques. See you soon. This is Greg Robinson for myphotographyshow.com.